Hello everyone, my name is Evgeny Nikitin. I'm a head of AI at Celsius AI. And today I want to tell you about our experience of training neural networks for medical images using the real data, data sets in missing and unreliable annotations. Everyone who has ever worked with the real medical data knows that it can be really annoying. Despite the fact that DICOM format is universally accepted and used almost everywhere in the world, data scientists often need to spend considerable amount of time to prepare the raw data for training the neural nets. Well, this is where the real adventure begins. In order to train robust models that work well in the production environment, we often need to use datasets from the multiple sources. Of course, these datasets vary a lot in terms of their image and annotation quality and type. For example, one dataset may only contain biopsy verified image level labels that indicate the presence of malignant object. The other dataset will just have bounding boxes for malignant objects, which were annotated by radiologists. And the third dataset will also include, mm, let's say, pseudo labeled benign masses. How do you deal with all this madness? Well, there are many ways to cope with these problems, but today I will tell you about some of them that proved effective in our experience. The first group of methods is focused on the data itself. The most obvious way to improve the quality of the data is to improve your annotation process. The best way to annotate medical data is, of course, consensus labeling when multiple radiologists annotate the same image, and then you can manually or even semi-automatically review the differences between these annotations. Uh, unfortunately, this slows down the annotation process and makes it more expensive. Luckily, you can compensate for that by using pseudo-labeling. NVIDIA has a brilliant solution just for that as a part of their Clara Train SDK. It's called AI-assisted annotation. Uh, basically, this is a tool that pre-annotates your images using NVIDIA pre-trained or even your own models. It creates initial guesses that can be corrected by the radiologists, and this is usually much, much faster than annotating from scratch. The next thing that is not related to the annotations, but is still worth mentioning in this context of training robust models is the universal image preprocessing. Medical images come from the different scanners with the different image acquisition protocols. So it's really crucial to invest your time into creating this preprocessing pipeline uh, when you're using multiple data sets for training. Finally, even when you have no labels at all, you can utilize unsupervised pre-training to get the model that can be then fine-tuned uh, for the real task using labeled data. Since we're dealing with the neural networks, of course, there are ways to modify the architecture of the network itself in order to make it more suitable for training with the multiple data sets. The exact set of modifications depends on the task at hand. But here are a couple of examples from our practice. Some of our models are two-stage object detectors that have region proposal networks. If we just ignore the fact that there are multiple data sets that have different sets of classes, we will, we will be heavily penalizing our network for proposing the region that indeed contains an object, just because the annotation for this object is missing in this particular data set. This is not good. In order to avoid that, we use multiple region proposal networks and multiple heads and pass an image through one of them, depending on which data set the image is coming from. Another useful trick is multitask learning and using additional heads. Some of our datasets contain additional information about the image. For example, a biopsy proven image level label or tissue density or something like that. We add extra heads and pass images through them only if we have corresponding labels. This helps to build more robust models and gives us useful additional predictions that can be used for post-processing of the output. Last but not least, there are some cool tweaks that can be applied to the training process itself. One of my favorite ideas is ground truth correction during training. Even if some of our masks or bounding boxes are noisy, you can use the signals from the model itself to make corrections and refine your ground truth labels. If implemented correctly, these methods can save you a considerable amount of money since you can now relax your strict requirements to the annotations and annotation review process. When working with the noisy data, it's important to remember that all these tricks that I mentioned will work only if you can correctly evaluate their effect. This requires having gold standard data set for the final evaluation. Preferably, it should be verified by medical history of the patient. If you don't have this kind of data set, invest some time and money into creating it before conducting fancy deep learning experiments.